Gut health is a topic that would not have been talked about, let's face it, five or even ten years ago in the media. And yet now, and rightly so of course, more and more people are talking about their gut health. Even if you're putting in the healthiest food into your body, if you don't have good gut health, everyone, you won't really be digesting your food optimally. So as a result, you won't receive all the benefits. So... It made sense that this week's Food for Thought sees the fabulous Mac twins, Alana and Lisa, their TV presenters of Channel 4's Know Your Shh, can't they say that word on here now, and founders of The Gut Stuff. This led them (laughs) onto this amazing journey of discovery. Can you imagine about why their bodies behave differently and they've made it their mission for the last few years to better understand what gut health is all about and empower other people with this knowledge so let's go hello lisa and alana hello hi oh my goodness i can't believe we finally get to talk together in person it must have been what year since we last saw each other definitely before covid yeah I think it was that supper we last saw you, you that supper club we did with the hanging balloon on the years ago. <laughs> that was like very <laughs> start oh of my, that was a hundred years ago. Goodness, it really yeah. was. And obviously yeah. babies are in the mix yeah. and yeah. you Crazy. guys are killing it. You've As got are you. products are on the shelves and yeah. This As is, have you. I know it's all got out of control really, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. But I think for everyone um listening, we need to discover, you know, how did you guys get into gut health? I've done a brief intro of course and explained about the studies, but what is your mission? now because you guys aren't scientists of course you're kind of living it yeah yeah so we came into gut health very randomly actually when we die it will look like this was the plan because (laughs) um, because our obituaries will make make sense sense. (laughs) i was meant to do medicine at uni and alana was supposed to do business and law yeah um and then we both were like changed our ucas forms i went to drama school and alana went to dance school much to the dismay of our working class scottish parents who were like (laughs) You're the first people to go to uni. What's going on? (laughs) Um, But it looks like it was kind of planned now. But we volunteered for twin research under Tim Spector, um, mainly because we were really fascinated by physiologically what was different between us. Alana actually had arthritis when we were growing up and they couldn't work out why I didn't have it because Mm. it wasn't viral. Um, So, yeah, and I had really bad acne. You can decide... Who got the worst deal out of that? I've got that now. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just handed it to you. Um, and, you know, Tim Spector asked us to have our guts analysed, long story short. Um, it was the kind of start of what was the American Gut Project at the time. So that was back in 2015. I yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, lots of still samples later. Um, I think what it did, though, what the research did is... You know, you know where we were from and the way we thought about health was health was just not being ill and wellness was standing on your head drinking green smoothies. Now that's not for me. And actually for us as well, like health was something we did two weeks before we went on holiday. The cabbage soup diet. Remember the cabbage soup diet? Did you do that? I mean, oh, I didn't do it, but I remember them all. I did. I've seen them all. Duke, and we baby did them food. all. Yeah, yeah. baby, baby food. food. Oh my God, baby food. The, what was the one that Beyonce did? Was yeah. it cayenne pepper or something? Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. So we were, we fell foul to all those. That was us. And it was very much, you know, we were DJs. It was very much what was on the outside rather than what was on the inside and as we were going through the research also thinking about this preventative health piece was huge and a real light bulb moment for us and you know we also just got a bit disillusioned with what was happening on social media at the time of you know what works for me should work for everyone Mm. and we were like hold on a minute you know what we found out from the research was even though we have 100% the same DNA we only have 30 to 40% the same gut bacteria mad isn't it isn't that fascinating yeah Yeah. so completely different so actually and not only completely different from a microbial point of view but just the way that our behaviour behaviour and, and lifestyle was was completely different so we just became disillusioned by the messaging that was going out there and we were like right we need to, we want to change this and actually all the conversations that were happening about gut health at that time very few and far between back in 2015 2016 and um, were happening in the back of health food stores and we were like actually how do we democratize it and bring it to the masses and people you know that need the information the most i guess the people like from a very simple perspective like the people that we were DJing to, all these people in their early 20s, um, who are actually a lot healthier than we all were in our early 20s, I'll give them something that. Um, you know, can we speak to them about preventative lifestyle mm. medicine message? Um, and I guess that was just the kind of catalyst and now it's yeah, very much out of control. <laughs> yeah, and I think like the mission has not changed that the gut stuff over the, the seven years. It is to empower gut health in everyone and to really democratise the information. And as we were going through the research and speaking to lots of different people in different fields, we've what we found was that it was quite disparate so you had you know in food you had Kellogg's and Danone playing and sort of dominating in that digestive 
health and if we, mm. you know because we well we, I think we'll probably get onto this but the difference between gut health and digestive oh, health yeah. or the complications yeah. around it and then obviously pharma was 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 big and you know we were like actually speaking to scientists and clinicians how can we disseminate this amazing science into layman's terms like us yeah. that that people will understand and we put ourselves in in that mm. you know the masses category um, and so what started off as an education platform has has grown sort of arms and legs but it's very very important to us that we democratize overall health in general and through the lens of gut health that's what people like i think everyone likes the fact that you're relatable also the fact that you've lived it you've been through these studies you're making information accessible that's what's the key because let's face it i think it's such a new area that we were just discussing we Mm. saw each other when you were under the study with tim (laughs) specter that's only a few years ago really i mean it Yeah, for us, it feels like a lifetime ago. (laughs) But it was only a few years ago. So if you want to explain to everyone how you see the microbiome, what do you see it as? The fact that you guys have less than 50% the same and you're born and you live together in the womb is amazing. Why is that? Did you get any answers on that? Yeah, they think it could be potentially... Well, the reason why I maybe got arthritis and Lisa didn't was due to recurrent antibiotics I had when we were about three due to urine infections. I remember I used to get it. jealous that you were always going into hostel and you used yeah. to get free... Twins are weird. When I you broke, used to get free toys. That was just you as a person as well. When I broke my arm, <laughs> Lisa was like, my arm's sore. Like, just because she wanted the attention. So it was like, lies. No, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the microbiome was probably one of the hardest things to get our head around. Mm. I think the first thing that to get our head around was that our gut was more than just our stomach or oh, our beard, belly, beard belly. So yeah. everything from mouth to bum, huge piece of kit. That was the first like, oh, wow, how did I not know this in 25 years of my life? Yeah. Yeah. The second one was, yeah, that there's this ecosystem that live in around and on, on us. Um, you know, most of those microbes live in our large intestine. And um, for us, I was like, what all this bacteria? Like, give me a bath. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where's the Detto? We were yeah. 80s babies brought up thinking that all bacteria was bad. And actually, um, Dr. Emily Lehman, who's our new chief science officer, said an amazing thing yesterday, which was another, as we go through this journey, there's always light bulb moments. She said, if aliens came down from space and looked at us as creatures, they would see us as half microbial. We are one to one. So they'd see us as hybrid creatures. So, yeah. And I was like, Oh, wow. And actually, the first time you hear that, it can be overwhelming. But yeah. the, the the thing, the beauty of it is that you can change your microbiome. It's empowering. And I think that, but that first hurdle is a lot to get your head around. And, and it I think... did more positive things for us mm. than, than we know or could ever could know or hope to know in the future. And yeah. just think, that's what we, um, Oana was saying yesterday about them being little doctors. Yeah, and so we always around. try and use analogies for the microbiome because it is a lot to get our, our head around. And obviously a lot of people have used the rainforest one or think of them as your pets. And Garden. I'm a... Mm, grow the, the garden, garden. <laughs> grow the garden um, mm. you know diversity and all that sort of thing but um, I'm a bit obsessed with short chain fatty acids just yeah, now yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and obviously yeah. Yeah, yeah. did you ever think that would be something that would come out your mouth exactly <laughs> I used to say house music and there I say short, short chain fatty acids but um, you know Emily explains I was on a talk yesterday and this is the first time she's come out with this I was like this is genius okay. their base short chain fatty acids are like little doctors and nurses going around your body giving aids and obviously anti-inflammatory effects to, to all your organs I was like okay right this analogy light bulb Mm, and for us I think that's why the gut stuff has resonated with a lot of people because we are everyone and we we Mm. say to everyone we're toddlers speak to us like we're toddlers and we will then disseminate it and I think that's what resonated with the channel four series as well Mm. um but yeah the microbiome is a complex beast and it's so ever evolving and it's so unique you know Lisa and I are really different but it's it's fascinating a fascinating field research what's so interesting is that you were DJing on Love Island doing all (laughs) these things that were just let's be honest totally worlds away from (laughs) gut health yet you were probably taking calls behind the scenes saying right let's discuss short chain fatty acids here let's get these store samples What was it like at the time getting this kind of, because you've kind of been in this industry or in this new scientific Mm -hmm. field, new nutrition research, Mm -hmm. as it's grown and become more mainstream. So what was it like seeing other people start talking about the area that you were currently being studied? I mean, that must have been a bizarre feeling. Yeah, exciting, I guess. Like, I think, do you know what, actually, the the biggest kind of, um, you know, when everyone talks about rolling the snowball over the hill and now it feels like the snowball's coming down because it felt like we were, and you probably feel like this all the time, mm. like you, you're you're constantly trying to convince people that this thing is a thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think what's nice is the 
and especially I think you know at, and the channel the C- TV series is a good example of it we spent years pitching a show about gut health yeah. right and yeah. people were like absolutely no way like why, why would you there's why no you way there'd be a show about yeah. gut health yeah. yeah and we'd be like we were like oh and if you and do then, do it it's never going to be mainstream yeah they were like it's going to be tucked in the back of a channel that no one really knows and blah blah and then when channel 4 were like we'll give you the bake off slot we were like okay this is the catalyst like yeah. this is the t- this is the this is the change, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you know, things get more difficult as they get more mainstream because everyone starts to argue and fight with each other. <laughs> There's yeah. Which I thought that it's worse in this than it is in the music industry. Oh, honestly, no. I'm like, yeah. and I think mm-hmm. that it's because obviously the science isn't binary; it's open to interpretation. And you'll probably see this a lot more than than we do. Um, I think as well that you. This is why we got on so well, mm-hmm. and we've got such a shared mission to improve the health of the nation. And if that is everyone's mission then there should, shouldn't really be as much infighting as yeah. there actually is. But I think when we knew the sort of, you know, pat on the back for us when the first episode of Know Your Shh actually rated higher than Love Island. That's amazing. And news, we were like, wow, seven million people tuned in live amazing. to that show. Amazing, yeah. It was, you know, crazy for mm. us to get our heads around and tuned in live to a health format. And actually we were like, all this hard work, and as you know, the roller coaster that is running your own business is starting to pay off. And even just anecdotally with our friends, when we first started it, they were like, what are you two on about? Like, <laughs> And the behind the scenes, as you say, like getting the right, um, mix of experts on yeah. the show and yeah. the mix of some things that are you know of course it has to be entertaining yeah yeah as well as sensitive to the contr- amazing contributors that come on and I think that that's the tension as well that the tightrope that it, we all walk is mm. getting people interested in something um, and getting them passionate about it plus being efficacious true to the science being true to these people that come amazing people that come in having the right clinical team you know and the 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 clinical team that you see on the show is only half of the team that are yeah Mm -hmm. it's like there's gps there's a whole clinic set up Mm -hmm. um and i think that was yeah and to your to your initial point i think that was probably maybe the seed the the change when people started to talk about wanted to talk more about gut health than Love Island. <laughs> yeah, that is quite oh, telling, yeah. actually. It's definitely quite telling. I, it's interesting you mention mm. about arguments online or you see a lot mm. of scientists, and this is something I see a lot, that get very excited about their area of research mm-hmm. and then they believe that it's going to apply to everyone on a public health level and it just doesn't work that way. But obviously we're in our own little echo chamber. I would go as far as saying a lot of people were listening to Food for Thought today, guys. Mm. I know you're probably aware of gut health. Lots of people still aren't. The reality is we've still got a really big journey to get basic mainstream information out there. There's a lot of confusion. People are talking about blood glucose levels now. People, There's always something trendy people are talking about in the scientific world. So if you could explain to people from what you guys have experienced, how big a deal is this really in terms of keeping us healthy, keeping our immune systems ticking? You know, we're getting into that season we spoke about it before we went on air with our kids going to nursery or whatever, but the bugs, the bugs are coming. Yeah. They're around. How important is what we eat? Yeah, I think what how the immune system thing, what, when it landed with me, mm was because I was like well, our immune system's house in our gut I don't understand yeah it's, it, this is just it for my listeners I always say well, 70% of the immune system's in the gut but that is really hard to get your head around yeah because you but just I think, think we think your immune system, system is your is cold or, or echinacea yeah or yeah. boosting your immune system which you don't want to do yeah. so we just see the market in jargon about our immune system and actually we I think a lot of us and I put myself in that category before don't really know what our immune system no, is. No they just take a, take a shot of the popular product I can't say that you put in the water and it turns it orange you drink yeah. it you're like great <laughs> I'm doing my yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 But as well like and I think that there's so many other the thing that landed for me was that your microbes teach your immune cells mm. the good and bad mm. thing and I was like oh wow they're like train- that was like okay great and They're then, like personal trainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jenna, um, Jenna Machoki, who's an amazing immunologist. I love Jenna. We've yeah. had her on the podcast oh, before. She's amazing. the best. Yes. Um, Scottish and has twins. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I remember. Yeah, she came over my flat in London years ago, and we did an in um, Facebook live back then. Yeah, oh, when they were like, old school. Oh, very old school. I don't do that anymore. But mm. she's an amazing immunologist. Yeah, yeah. and I think the way she explains it as well is like you know all these two different tools in your armory, and it doesn't have to be infrared saunas um you know it can be lots of small simple changes that you're uh, same similarly with gut health you know the things that and this is what when we were writing the book and i'm sure you felt the same like a lot of the stuff for different areas and silos comes up again 
so variety fiber all the stuff that we talk yeah. about uh, and i remember angelie's book on uh, angelie's chapter on skin yes. was really similar to Gemma, jenna's chapter yes. on um on the immune system and actually there was so much crossover of like doing all of these small things will yeah. help your immune system and your skin and your gut health all linked. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. all linked and i think that was again again another moment that that it, you know wasn't it made it feel less overwhelming that it was actually there was small... we're singing from the same hymn sheet we are totally mm. and i think it's difficult the complexities come with gut health because people think as soon as they think gut health they sort of think digestive health and maybe digestive issues abs abd which we should absolutely be focusing and supporting people on but actually everyone needs to be thinking about gut health but that's quite hard to market so it's like everyone listen because people are <laughs> yeah. going to resonate with different things whether it be you know menopause fertility mental health skin you know all these things you know all relate back to our gut but that's difficult a difficult message in to get it across. Is. Mm-hmm. I think people are aware that how well you eat can impact these things, but not the gravitas of actually how much it does. Because mm-hmm. let's face it, we all experience from day to day bloating, mm-hmm. you know, different digestive symptoms mm-hmm. that I know you guys have got. And are there any lesser known symptoms that you experienced or something that you've seen in, in the studies, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I guess things like eczema, so things that people wouldn't associate, obviously, anxiety, eczema, tiredness, thing- fatigue, yeah, yeah fatigue, Low brain energy. fog. Yeah. Um, all of these things that I think sleep. people... Sleep, oh my goodness, sleep disturbances. Yeah. Huge. Who would have linked that to your gut health? Yeah, yeah. and I think as well, and that's like a, a good point, is that, you know, your gut health isn't a linear journey mm. or your wellness or your, you know, ha- food for nutrition and nourishing our bodies is not linear because your life stages and getting ill go through, you know, I, I think since being pregnant, I thought I had my wellness, my gut health nailed. Yeah. And then suddenly all these new hormones oh my goodness. and stuff coming and I'm and like... you can't eat anything but beige in the yeah. first yeah. few weeks. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry. And then when they come, again. it's like grabbing whatever you Sugar. can. Yeah, 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 literally. And I think that's the thing that is also hard to get your head around. Normally in the health and wellness world, people are selling quick fixes or change who you are overnight. The thing about gut health and the beauty of it, I think, is that it's simple swaps over a long period of time that is going to fluctuate across your life, whether that be life events, you know, or work stress like so many things impact our microbes that everything needs to be taken into account it's an ever evolving you know journey um, and that's a, you know it's hard to get your head around but that's certainly where we've seen the benefits anecdotally individually with ourselves I mean we couldn't have been further from health and wellness being working class DJs <laughs> um, but though. actually and we're not we're not angels now so to no, speak you no know um, so I think actually that long term thinking about our, our gut health and that's why with the gut stuff we're in it for the long term Mm-hmm. Um, and we and as you said and you know quite rightly pinpointed is that most people still don't know where their gut yeah. is um, mm-hmm. so there's still a huge we're only maybe 5% of the way there there's still a huge way to go and I think that's why you know you do an amazing job as well of you know getting into the mainstream and yeah. s- talking about it in ways that people um, understand and can relate to and will change that behaviour it is really the impact that I find of the message of adding things in mm-hmm. I think it's so overwhelming to say to someone we'll go and eat the 4Ks go and eat a load of you know probiotic mm-hmm. foods that, that in itself is too much for yeah, absolutely. I, I think the basic message should be just have an apple of a snack one day instead of a shop bar bar sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes pick the right bar if you're going to pick a bar. Yeah. Obviously, I can plug you guys there. <laughs> but, you know, there's different areas that people can improve, get more yeah. diversity in and just think... Have an extra bit of veg. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. keep your skins on, the veg yeah. you are having. Yeah. If you're having pasta, try and have get brown, brown over yeah. white. It's like those simple swaps. I think it's and hard. they don't break the bank. That's affordable and accessible. We're living in a cost of living crisis now and I think for so many people it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How am I going to feed my children? Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be scared of baked beans. They're actually fantastic. Just buy the mixed beans. Yeah. Yeah, the mixed beans and tomato sauce. They're yeah. cheaper. There's a variety of beans in there rather than one generic one in a, yeah. you know, the brand that everyone knows of baked beans. <laughs> so yeah, there's simple swaps. What, what are the biggest simple swaps you guys would implement for people? Yeah, exactly that. I would say, you know, cost of living crisis, get yourself to that fruit and veg aisle, you mm-hmm. know, the discounted section. You know, Lisa's a brilliant cook. I am not so much. I don't have much patience. Maybe that'll change once you have your baby. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. <laughs> what happens yeah, with a little world cup <laughs> yeah. I know um, yeah. but things like that like just you know if in doubt go to the reduce section you'll probably pick up something you may not normally pick yes. up and that's the thing you know we all go into the supermarket and yeah. pick up the same six things I think bread is like a good interesting place to start yeah. because obviously 
yes, sourdough is at the end of the spectrum, tends to be expensive, mm. probably difficult to make yourself. However, not all sourdough is sourdough. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's and I think that bread is a perfect example of where, especially things like gluten, and people think that they should yes. cut out gluten, fun, alcohol, <laughs> everything, <laughs> when, when actually, you know, tiny, tiny percent of the population are, in fact, celiac. But bread is a good example of it might not be the gluten it could be all the other nonsense that is in oh the bread goodness. that you're having yeah um because if something has a shelf life of three months <laughs> it's probably yeah yeah what's that doing yeah. to your micros i think that that's a really good easy place to swap in the morning yeah. of you know there's options for 50 yeah. 50 there's options for whole grain yeah. if you do want to splash out on a sour yeah. dough go crazy i just got a bread yeah. maker it's a game changer i love it i think maker. over time it will obviously they're expensive that initial one but try and get it in a sale they do yeah, actually yeah. do a really good discount on the sales but it's so easy you just put all the flour and the butter love and the fun. water and the sugar and salt it's yeah. pretty cheap cheaper over yeah. time than buying packets. and that's for anyone obviously that's mm. experiencing digestive discomfort from consuming bread but of course for some people we've got to remember bread is fortified you know with calcium with iron folic acid so actually it's not always the the demon a lot of people demystify these things or rather that's not what we're doing demystifying <laughs> people build things up in the wrong way gluten mm-hmm. in particular oh. there's all these myths about how it micro tears inside mm-hmm. the gut and mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on this because you must get this i imagine people message you all the time because you're more approachable i think for this type of stuff i people do you know what it's actually more like if we go around to people's houses for dinner and stuff and really? people are oh i apologizing. know that you're, yeah yeah I and you're like, oh, you won't have that i'm like yeah, I'm like, where's the red wine? Where's the, <laughs> like, and I'm like, the chocolate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's more people have demonised. Yeah, gluten is one, dairy is obviously the other. Yeah, um, and any sort of sweeties or chocolate or mm. sugar yeah. is another one. And actually, like people want to have a binary relationship with these things. Um, I think because they're, and this is a perfect example of when industry races ahead and usurps ahead of the actual science oh, um, because there's so many massively. gluten-free products that people assume that they shouldn't be having them but the problem with the gluten-free a lot of the gluten-free products that are out there is that they're full of other well, nonsense gluten's a protein mm-hmm. and it binds yeah. food so mm-hmm. it's got to have extras to bind a product to make it right yeah and i think yeah. people the problem as well is that people usually you know uh, this is anecdotally go out for dinner yeah. and go yeah i'm out for dinner so i'll have this this, this, yes. this. then they get a bit of bloat in it and of course you're going to get a bit of bloat and you've eaten food you know and richer food than you normally have at home yeah. you've had your a really good time a party. you've been sat down for ages hunched over yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you're drinking you're chatting mm. you've you, you know yes you might have a bit of bloating and they just go okay right i could never have any of that because i felt really uncomfortable at that yeah. meal or i'm not going to have it at a meal now it so bad. it must be bad for me and i think that it's not the actual, you know, it's not the the bread, the gluten that's a problem. It's people's relationship and behaviours around that. And I the think relationships what... with food are huge, right? Yeah. You mentioned yeah. um, psychological factors of lesser known symptoms, mm-hmm. you know, things like stress. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's even links, obviously, there's big links with depression and the yeah. food that we eat now with the mm-hmm. SMILES trials that have come out. Yeah. We know the Mediterranean diet could potentially be as effective as antidepressants. Mm-hmm. This is big stuff we're talking about. So why on earth are the government not doing more to raise awareness? Yeah, and the gut brain axis is, you know, I think as well, again, another kind of light bulb moment for us is like you think of them as, you know, they're connected in so many ways. We always think of the vagus nerve it's like a as telephone like the phone line. line. Phone line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the neurotransmitters and all the many ways that they're connected but I think that you know one there's a cyclical cycle of you're anxious about what you eat and you're in fight or flight before you start to eat you know are you putting your body in rest digest probably not and then also you know the all the science that's starting to come out and you know yes a lot of the studies um, are new they've been done on mice etc but I think knowing that there's a link there Mm is important mm. and we can use that as a tool in our armory yes is sauerkraut going to cure your depression like lots of tabloids would like to tell us no. absolutely not and yeah. that's the problem when it comes is like good mood food and all this stuff like when you industry know, jumps context. on top of it mm-hmm. and even i found writing a project i'm writing mm-hmm. at the moment is that you've got a word limit and mm-hmm. when the words that you write get edited, things get taken out of context. Yeah. And you're going back saying, look, the whole message of what we just wrote gets lost. And it's the same in marketing. Think mm-hmm. about these guys making adverts on TVs. They've got like, what, one line? Yeah. yeah. 
to put yeah. in bold to yeah. get a message across. Yeah. Isn't that out? It's mad. Yeah, no. And uh, the really hard thing when it comes to gut health as well and, and food is that regulatory wise, you're oh. not allowed to say pre or probiotics no. on pack and you're not allowed to make health claims. No. You're not allowed. So actually, it's really difficult to say the benefits of of food or food products on pet. But people do, don't mm. they? Yeah. And yeah. you must naughty. have seen it. You must have seen a lot of naughty yeah. companies mm. working rules and they don't get picked up as and no. it takes ages to get picked up. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. So there's another area I want to touch on before we do listener questions because there's I feel like this topic's just huge. Mm. Food allergies, food sensitivities, obviously they're very, very different things. Do you want to break that down a little bit for what you guys have seen and witnessed and been told? The thing about and actually we get asked a lot of this when it comes to kids mm. and if you have a food fun. allergy you will know about it oh it's an immune response <laughs> okay, <isn't>, right <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think that's what people say that they're allergic to things when actually you might have a bit of an intolerance to something or sometimes in combination with other things mm. you might feel a bit uncomfortable when you eat it etc and i think there needs to be a lot more awareness around the that and people cutting two. out but also as well are you like, doing a lot of that at the moment on the gut stuff like trying to raise awareness between these differences yeah, yeah. between the two and we actually saw but on the flip side of that especially on the show we saw people that are so debilitated yeah. um by by things you know allergies and or food sensitivities work, can eat at work commute, yeah. or yeah. you know eating out is a huge deal mm. so so talking about both both ends of the spectrum I think it all comes down to educating exactly what they are who can you go to what do you do you know what do you do in that situation is it your GP you know please don't send your hair off in the post oh my goodness <laughs> um, please don't do that or even any testing yeah just look intolerance testing um, yeah. Yeah. Or it'll yeah. tell you that you can't have Pinot Grigio you know it's so specific because you just like, had a glass of it exactly yeah. so stuff like that I would say Education needs to be done there, and that's our biggest bugbear. Is people say, "I did this test; it's t- it told mm. me to cut out X, Y, and Z," and that's something you're like, "No." It preys on really vulnerable people. Yeah. Let's take um, I don't know. Let's pretend case study Jane. She goes to work in the morning. She gets there. She's had to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom already because of the stress of the commute, the symptoms mm. she's experienced. She's then in pain at work all day. She feels she can't eat a proper lunch. She's then not concentrating. Everything goes wrong. She sees this test, find out what's wrong, but you do have to fork out X money. Quid. You're desperate. Yeah, they mm-hmm. do. Do Absolutely. It. Yeah. And, you know, we saw it time and time again on the show and that's what we're trying to do with our app is actually, you know, the app comes out in January is, you know, people will not log obsessively because that's not right. Don't have to log every day. We're doing like sprints of yeah. logging. But it's, you know, actually looking at the correlations and patterns, it might not be something that you yeah. need to. It could be a work event. Oh, it could be so the days that you have to, you know, commute. It could be any anything. Yeah. It could be the day your kid's in nursery or not. Yeah. Um, and actually, like, what are those patterns and correlations? And starting yeah. to actually tune in. And I think a lot of us don't really tune in. And we were we definitely didn't unless we were hungover or we were ill. <laughs> I still don't um, some days. Yeah. I'm a nutritionist, yeah. that's my profession, but life yeah. takes over and we've just got to realise that's why. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure when you see people in clinic, yeah. um, you know, that bigger picture piece is so important, oh, that holistic all, lifestyle yeah. thing, because, as you know, even if, even if these tests were gold standard mm. brilliant, yeah. you're not taking into account anything else in that no. person's life. No, and we've got to remember allergies. For people that experience allergies, they're life-threatening for Absolutely, some people. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we've heard all the stories about the girl on the aeroplane mm-hmm. and there are some terrible cases, but they have raised awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everyone should be more aware of that difference. Now, moving forwards, with we know the gut's the second brain mm-hmm. and we've got lots of listener questions for you. So the first one from Amy said, please could you touch on the difference? And I know we mentioned irritable bowel diseases earlier, mm-hmm. but for Crohn's and colitis sufferers, what about people that are seeing all this fatty stuff out there and they've got a serious disease with their gut? Yeah, and I think that's why it's really important if you do think that you have an allergy to see your GP because they will be able to test you yeah. for it. So mm-hmm. I think that we always say like make sure before you do all these fads that you rule stuff out and a lot of the products that that are to do with gut health and apps and things like that aren't suitable for people that have digestive issues because no. you need to be within a clinical setting mm. um yeah in order to have those treated because you're, the advice for especially around things like fiber um you know the general advice that we give will not be for you. No, and people need to know who to go to. So I'm a registered nutritionist mm-hmm. working in public health capacity. My team in the nutrition clinic, we've got gut health specialists, yeah, dietitians yeah. that work in the hospital and day in, day out, they deal with irritable bowel diseases. Yeah. yeah. They deal with this type of inflammation and these autoimmune responses and various things. Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame to generic 
public health, gut health, right? Yeah, and I think that's that's a, a, what comes to confusion with yeah. gut health. I mean, there's so many complexities to it. Um, but I certainly had that. My eyes opened. I think episode three was all on, um, you know, IBD. Yeah. And yeah, I certainly had my eyes opened when we started filming yeah. that. Um, yeah. And you know, it's so debilitating. Oh my for a goodness! Lot of people. One of my best friends when I was at university studying nutrition Emily at the time we worked we used to do night shifts at the library <laughs> to make oh, ends meet you know like you do <laughs> we would just sit there you just stayed up all night when you yeah, student chat. right we used to just stay up working and chatting in the library but yeah. she had Crohn's mm-hmm. and the amount of steroids and trials she was on at Bristol in the time traveling back and consultants there's still it's still a lot of research we don't have enough answers in those areas it's no. really hard for people to live a life where they're not in pain and it can knock them out for a whole week or more yeah we hosted the um in Scotland the kind of uh, it's like a paediatric conference for IBD and these kids you know it's so difficult that you know there's so much time off school oh, there's so much and I think that that's what annoys me about the industry and just have gluten-free products and we're like you are belittling what is yeah. a really debilitating issue for people well, and for I me think... it's also charlatans in the nutrition world yeah. you know yeah. pretend nutritionists that are trying to sell their plans and programs yeah. to to people yeah. taking advantage yeah. and for oh, us it's like this, what can we take do take this dragonfly supplement to increase your villi mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like I oh my god well, like, I think what we had on the show and what we see all the time at the gut stuff is people just saying thank you so much for raising oh. awareness on it like I don't mm. feel alone and actually the amount of messages we still get because it it's still on all four yeah, I think people are like I just don't feel alone now. and actually what a lot of people said is that you know teenagers saying my friends get it now yeah. after watching it they get mm. it they get yeah. what I'm going through and they yeah. get and actually for us I was like job done like that's... we do get a lot of people trying to book into PHQ on the street with us <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> I wish I could book you into PHQ <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not quite now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so sweet and then we a question here from Joe. I'd like to understand a little more about antibiotics so I know you guys mentioned you'd understood the differences mm-hmm. when you were younger how can it affect your gut health and if needing to take antibiotics is there anything we can do to reduce the impact on the gut microbiome yeah, so antibiotics are basically like a sort of chemical bomb on yeah, your bacteria. So it takes out the bad, but obviously mm-hmm. it takes out the good as well. But if you, obviously, obviously caveat, eat, right? yeah. yeah. And I think you... that, like, this is a really good personal example. When I, after I gave birth, Addie and I both needed antibiotics. Yeah, I was the same. Yeah. And I was like, Zaki, yeah. I was literally saying to Luke when I was half, like I said, no, no, we can't have, like, like, you when I was to save your life. Yeah, they told me when I was pregnant with Zachary, t- while I was giving birth, look, He's got an infection. Your temperature's really high. You're going to have to take this. He's born. I was like, can we yeah. just wait and see? But they were, yeah, but yeah. You and like, to. and that's yeah. the thing. Like, when they are necessary, absolutely. Overuse of antibiotics is is one thing. But actually, um, a lot of the time now, like our little cousin's a chemist, and she says that she will always recommend if people are given a dose of antibiotics to have a probiotic. Mm-hmm. And other countries, you get, and in other countries, you get given that as standard in prescription. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but and as well, yeah. with caveat in that there are certain strains yes. of probiotic <laughs> researched. Yeah. Um, research. So we always just say, how about we go on PubMed if you've got a rainy day? And just <laughs> we actually and... just have a thing launching this week on probiotics, like what they right. are, when you should actually take yeah. them, what ones, because I think there's a lot of confusion around that as well. Yeah. And, you know, we do a lot of corporate wellness talks. We're going to one after this. And, Without a doubt, everyone will say, should I be taking a probiotic or should they should I not? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's something that we're really passionate and just educating about. And you've got to do your research. Um, so, yeah, we've got something coming out this week yeah. on what actually they are and when. And yeah, when so for them. anyone, I think taking yogurt's a really good example. If you buy yogurt, you want to look on the side, added strains. Often it'll be lactobacillus or bifidobacter, whatever it may be in the side. But even vegan yogurts now, for people that can't consume dairy, you can get them with added strains, which is fantastic. Just yeah, life culture. Just yeah. Like, I, I think as well, it's exactly that thing. You know, yes, if you do want to take a probiotic after you've had antibiotics, go for gold. If you've got the money and you want to research the strains and you've got the time, yeah. go for gold on that. But as yeah. you say, like just all the simple swaps just, that we talk about, yeah. trying up your fibre a bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, try and have um, some more life cultures. If you do want to swap yeah. your fizzy drink for a kombucha, I um, have to say, we're, my them, kids don't know any different. So they're brought up mm-hmm. in this generation where obviously I know a lot more than I did growing up. They mm-hmm. have kefir. Yeah. Yeah, so this my normal. normal. Literally, and we were talking <laughs> about this having a kefir ice lolly yesterday. Ice lolly yes. yesterday. Yum, yummy, yummy. They don't know. You know this. Oh, when she, even when she does the homemade bread, she goes. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> she's eating the, the microwave. Mm. Yeah. 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 Does she love it? Like she from a young age has started. Her, yeah. 
And I think that's why our generation is exciting to, for us to make. You know, mm. my mum, she's getting there to be fair, but my mum was very much like, you're too preachy, you can't change me now, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it wasn't till, you know, maybe seven years later, even my husband, he's now going, oh, I think I get Mine's it now. the same, yeah. It took a long time. Yeah. We've been together 13 years, right. a long time. And um, yeah, he didn't eat any veg when he met me. <laughs> I've never discussed this before. Actually, like, <laughs> yeah. personally, yeah. never met any veg. We used to have arguments. I used to storm out of the flat because he just wouldn't put any Hide veg it in, in anything. Hide pasta sauces. Yeah, eventually, yeah. anyway, now he eats everything. Okay, good. Took a long time. Yeah. It just shows. But and that's like a prime yeah. example of the long-term yeah. mission yeah. and you know simple swaps. It yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. have to be. And him probably overhearing you every now and then and got you know pennies dropping. Yeah. Every couple of years. Honestly, <laughs> look, the other, like, it's literally like... after TV show went. You know what I think you should do the gut stuff on. I thought, oh god, here we go. He went. I think it should be like messing around like simple swaps I was like yeah. do you have you have, have you watched anything we've I know, done over and you're the like, last I have been trying yeah. but it doesn't sink in I think until it becomes a part of your world yes. and yeah. that's the really interesting part so when you're looking at gut health anyway you've got to think about the fact that okay everyday symptoms can be impacted by what I'm eating but mm-hmm. the future generation what are they they're not Gen Z they're mine's a coronial I think because he was okay. born oh, pandemic I don't, know. I don't know what they're called, what they called? My, my 2020 right. boys are coronial coronial, coronial. All right. See, I don't was know if that's taken off but that's so, what I was told okay. <laughs> yeah it sounds awful like, like, that that sounds like, sounds like Star Trek I don't know what it is um, <laughs> I do worry what social media and stuff will be like for yeah. our kids' age. And, because and we've like got that. a real chance, right? Millennial generation and whatever onwards. I think we've all got a real chance to give the future generations more education around yeah. food. Yeah, and, but you just, we know how long it takes to change. Like, we're on the NHS Food Review Board, which is great because it shows that they're looking at the importance of gut health yeah. um, among that. But you know, we're still on five edge of that. I know. Um, but also like... percent of us get five a day. Is That's the 2019 that, that right? oh ND, yeah, National Diet and Nutrition Survey, but we need another one. Yeah. yeah. But interestingly, like we're piloting to be on the school curriculum just now in sort of food tech. Please. So they've got stuff module. You. Let me yeah. know if I can help. Yes, you, I, yes. You're in. Honestly, yes, you're in. It's the cute. I and they thing. get it. Yeah. They get mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Like, and as part of it, they have to, because it's food tech, so they've got to cook yeah. what they would normally cook and add Love extra fibre, variety, okay, whatever. Okay. But that's been really heartwarming for us. Yeah. Like, we would do that all day, every day, if, yeah. if we if could. It, I know. And because they're so passionate about it, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, of course, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually, like, that's what the gut stuff is all about, is making those grassroots, you yeah. know, systemic change over a long period of time. And, wow. yeah, if the way that we do that is through talking about poo on TV and, and all the rest of it, having pink poos on bus stops, then then so be it. Thank you. No, I love it. I think what you're doing is amazing. And it leads me on to our fact or fiction round. Okay. Okay. Oh, we'll I don't know how this. we're going to do this with both of you, actually. We'll, we'll thinking... probably do it at the same time. Okay, you've got to try and answer simultaneously. Okay. Get okay. the twin vibe going. Okay, right. So fact or fiction. Detoxes and cleanses are the ultimate gut health solution. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Great start. Oh, fiction. Um, oh, is it? No, no, fiction. Right? You have to say fact or fiction, Lana. That's the name of the game. Do you know, everyone does it and then they say false, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Um, we'll right. A gluten free diet is necessary for optimal gut health. Fiction. fiction. Well done. That was simultaneous. Right. A healthy gut is solely determined by diet. Fiction. fiction. If you poo every day, it's a sign of a healthy gut. Fiction. Fiction. So we'll touch on that after. Mm-hmm. Supplements are necessary for gut health. Fiction. There's a lot of fictions here. Stress and sleep can impact our gut health. Fact. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> like a kid's TV show. Show. like a chorus, yeah. Fact. We're in harmony next. I love it, yeah. <laughs> Looking after your gut and overall health is all about inclusivity, moderation, and getting plenty of plant diversity. Fact. Fact. Bloating is all down to what we eat. Fiction. Fiction. Apple cider vinegar can cure digestive problems. <laughs> Fiction. <laughs> Although great in a salad dressing. Do you know what? I should have added a question on what's the new supplement everyone's taking? Glutamine or something, that amino yeah. acid, thinking it's going to heal their gut. Oh, yeah. Um, a healthy gut microbiota means good digestive health. Fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Well okay. done, girl. Quick <laughs> round. Yeah. That was fantastic. <laughs> uh, before we wrap up the episode, let's touch on bowel movements every day. It's yeah. such a misconception. Obviously, you don't want to go too long, but it everyone's different right yeah and i think that we're you know everyone's normal is different but what we kind of manage to get and especially on the show down to is like once every three days Mm -hmm. or three times a day is considered normal but even then you're normal you're normal and that's why alana poos once a day at the same time yeah 
Um, that's just that's her personality. I've Track. got yeah regular bowel movements. I'm mm-hmm. daily. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Not. And now my daughter's now about, half yeah. four. She's in. She's got no. the same as me. So <laughs> what I love is so weird when you see kids and you'll get this mm-hmm. when when your little one's born, not in the early days, but you'll notice they have the same time nearly every day where they go. Really? Yeah. Well, because I, I had yesterday, I did my one and only antenatal class that I've done. Well done. <laughs> um, Twelve days to go. My like, oh, I should probably learn on the job. It's one of those learning, learning on the about job. the they had good. Um, they've got a poo circular thing at Chelsea and Westminster. Yeah. I have my meconium thing. They yeah, had like yeah, little yeah. charts. Yeah. Um, and they were like the, the midwife that was taking it was kept apologizing, like, sorry about this. And I was like, I feel so at home here. Aww, <laughs> <I feel laughs> <hurt. Yeah. laughs> exactly. Well, there's so much more to cover, but it does wrap up today's episode. And we always do finish with a take home, like a food for thought message. And I think I'll start by just saying thank you. Because mm. I think what you guys have done is make something mainstream and more accessible, which is blooming fantastic. Get the conversation going. You know, alongside obviously the business empire that I think you've created, which is also, thank you for women in business and things that you're doing. Let's just rally together because it's hard and we mm-hmm. still are not quite up there yet for females in this country, but we're getting there. Gut health is incredibly important. It's those symptoms people don't realize. Your sleep, your happiness every day, your mood, it can impact it. So it's the little changes. It doesn't have to break the bank. Just buy some cans of beans and pulses, reduce your animal consumption a little bit and up your plant consumption. That's that's my kind of take home. Now between you both, I don't know how you're gonna do this, which food for thought would you like to leave our listeners with? And I think if you are passionate about gut health and you you know about it, spread that word in whatever mm. way you possibly can. Um and because until we know that everyone knows what their gut is and mm. why it's so important. We will not sleep at night, so it will help us sleep more. <laughs> Get to sleep. Yay. Yeah. I think mine just be like keep a curious mind. Like, like you know, if you're being sold something that is a quick fix or whatever, that keep a curious mind as to how much that is going to fix. You. Yeah, <laughs> fix you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that would be mine. I guess in general, it's just a good life. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Life's a roller coaster, honey. <laughs> you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds on test kits to understand yeah. and learn more about your gut, which is uh, also a fantastic take home. Now, girls, yeah. where can everyone go to learn more about what you do? It's just all it's just all the gut stuff. Yeah, thegutstuff.com, at the gut stuff. Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> and where can they purchase products? Because you've got yeah. things going yeah, on. Everywhere oh, yeah. really seems Morris boots, seems boots, boots, boots and super drug, super drug, super yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for coming on food for thought today. Thank you. Thank you.